Hi, I'm Zube, and welcome to episode 5 of Closure Script. And today I'm going to talk about connecting Lighttable to the web browser. Okay, so let's get started. We'll start by um, starting the Alignigan compilation for automatic Closure Script compilation. Then we'll start light table. Okay. Then we'll open a web page. Okay, so you can see that this HTML file represents the web page on the right hand side. Okay, and we compile down to main.js. which is what this is compiling and that will compile whenever this changes so if I add a space you can see it recompiles the first time it takes longer to compile but after that it usually just takes a few seconds on this code base which is small Okay, so let's do something with the DOM now. So first let's make a named ID. And then we'll use the Closure script Domino library to access the DOM. Just to show you a bit about Domino. So as you can see here, we can get an element by using by ID and we can add an element using append. So let's use those. I've already um, imported them, ID and append from Domino. And Domino has been included in our uh, No main project here for Linigan. Okay. Actually, one thing to note in light in in light table is you can add um, frequently used files on the left, and it's quite a nice feature, quite easily. So there. Okay. So. The first time it connects, it takes a while, of course. I do like the little animation down here. If you click on it, you see, I think that's the, uh, the web browser app, actually. And the, and the browser is based on Chrome, of course. Okay, so now let's say, ID uh, episode, episode five. So what did we call it? 
call it episode 5 ah now it returned to nil because we haven't reloaded the web page yet so every time we change this HTML page we still have to reload the web page buy ID. So let's see what happens if we give it an element that doesn't exist. Okay, then it's nil. Okay. Then we can append to that element. Nothing happens here, and this is a common mistake. You have to add an actual element. Okay. Now, let's test this outside of light table. Okay, it works. You can see it shows hello world. The reason it shows that is because this closure script that I typed in was compiled in the background here to main.js, which is included in the web page here. I hope you got that. That's quite fast. Okay, so let's close this light table browser. Now let's see what we have to do to um, let's see what happens. Let's put Chrome next to this. Okay, so see now it says no client available. Now the reason this is is that if you connect to a web browser which is not within Lighttable, then you have to add something else, some extra code to the HTML page. And that code is here. I think that goes after this. Okay, so now let's try it again. Okay, so now it works. So now we've connected to an external browser. Okay, but now if we create another browser inside, sorry, typo, if we create another browser inside here. then we try and connect again. Now we get a choice of where to connect to. 
and I have to admit it's a bit confusing because I'm not sure which they which so that connected to the internal browser so if you don't want it to give you um, what well, here's what I'd recommend if you're going to edit internally in light table then you can get rid of this line here you can get rid of this this is only if you're connecting to an external browser So, no. It looks like it's a bit confused here, and it still thinks it's an external client. But let's load that again. Okay, so maybe Chrome has kept a connection open. We can test that by closing Chrome. Okay, it's still confused. Let's see what happens if we quit and start again. So there's some sort of caching going on there. Okay, now it's not confused anymore. I'm sure they'll sort that out in time. So let's let it connect first, just to be sure. Okay, so now it knows we're talking to the internal web browser. Um, so the key thing here to note is that you don't have to add anything apart from your JavaScript file if you're connecting within Lighttable that's your JavaScript file but if you're connecting outside via Chrome or some other web browser then you have to add this and you have to be careful because this socket changes every time you start Lighttable so you, you have to copy and paste it every time you're in a new light table session. I can show you that. See it's 50442 now. Now it's 50450. It was 442 before. So it's already changed. Okay, um, oh, what, one other thing is we also used a library called Domina, which lets you get and set HTML elements. Here's a couple of examples. Um, you can check out the Domina web page. So on GitHub. I've tried some other DOM libraries um, in Lighttable, but they had a lot. They didn't seem to work, and I'm not sure why yet. I haven't investigated them uh, much further since this one just works. So 
go check it out, Domino, and uh, Light Table, of course. Um, and that's it for this week. Thanks. Bye.